everybody. I am Milhorn 117 and welcome to the official podcast at MilhornGaming.com. And oh my gosh, I am excited for this podcast because, you know, we got a very special guest here with us. And let me just start with him and introduce him. It's Tom Taylorson, the voice actor for Scott Ryder in Mass Effect Andromeda. Tom, thanks for being here, man. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, so how's your... How's your night going? How are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, fine, fine. Uh, can we hurry this up? The uh, Nintendo Switch event is at 8. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yes. We need, we need to move this along. We're keeping it at yeah. one hour on the dot then. <laughs> well, cause you, and, and it's later for you guys, so I, I appreciate you adjusting your schedule and recording schedule for, for my schedule. Oh, yeah. With the family today, so I appreciate it. For schedule, schedule, schedules. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple of men who go to sleep early, but it's worth it. Yeah, I'm an old man over here sometimes. I act like it at least. So. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, Circuit, how's your week been, man? Uh, fantastic, dude. I've been working on the website hard this week. Or hard yeah. working. No, I've got a pretty lengthy post on Galaxy of Heroes about to go up soon. So, Which uh, I heard, Tom, don't you like to play that too? Do you play Galaxy? Galaxy no, you play the Force Arena. Force That's Arena. what I saw today, right? Today, yes. It's been in my head a little bit, just a little bit. I've played a number of different rounds and unlocked some stuff. And now it's like, get to that point where you're like, all right, is it net decking time? I think it's net decking time. What's everybody <laughs> using? You know, because I wasn't in on the beta or anything like that. Right. Yeah. So I looked up some stuff and it's, oh, okay. Yeah. This yeah. is the first. Yeah. I played Clash Royale for a little bit and then I kind of saw that the really hard paywall and other things and thought, no, nope, done. Nope, no, right. not worth the check-ins, things like that. This, uh, especially the play style, has there's a little more activity because you got that hero thing. Yep. And so while you're dropping cards and whatnot, you you know, and laning like that, you've got the hero that you're kind of constantly toying with. That kind of reminds me of my time with Vainglory, right? And, yep. You know, right. and things like that. At least on the iOS. So I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. And then you, you, you slather Star Wars on it. Exactly. It makes anything and we're better. We're all Star Wars nerds. It's like the bacon of content. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. Oh, you put Star Wars. Well, sign me up. You know? <laughs> if they if they figure out a digital CCG that's as good as Hearthstone, and they put <laughs> and they put Star Wars on it, Ooh. I'm in trouble. I'm that's in tempting. serious trouble. Might have to get retirement for that cereal. one. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. So anyway, Circuit, you've been doing a Galaxy of Heroes. Anyways, yeah, yeah, that's another pretty heavy, uh, heavy on the grind game. Uh, anyways, yeah, so look out for that in the next couple of days. Besides that, just been getting amped for tonight. Had a busy week getting my car inspected, losing my insurance forms. It's oh, just, nice. Prime some, yeah, so it's good night to have a brewski and yeah, talk to Tom and you ugly mofos. <laughs> Don't forget well, me. How about you, T Prime? <laughs> are you are you keeping it low key over there? You know, I was trying to think of something else to say besides low key, but it's been pretty good. <laughs> hey, <if the> key <laughs> fits. Yeah, I might just stick just to low key it. because apparently that's my signature phrase. That's the yeah. last episode. Oh uh, yeah, it's been all right. Um, playing a lot of Galaxy of uh, Heroes as well. It's my new addiction, thanks to you guys. But um, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of a uh, PC gaming. Well. Let me rephrase that. What my Surface Pro 4 can handle. Um, playing some Soma, which is a, a horror, a horror game, kind of like Outlast on Xbox. And yeah. um, is it about drugs? No, it's not the drug from Brave New World. Figuring out what happened, kind of like a post-apocalyptic. Well, a major event happened, and you're trying to figure out what's going on. And the whole time, something yeah. scary is chasing you. Your character gets scared. You get scared. Adrenaline kicks in, and it's best to play at night alone. So it's like Clue in space. Yeah, kind of. Lots of running, hiding, <laughs> and puzzle solving. Okay. Interesting. Is that, it? some, is that on Xbox? Uh, it's on uh, it's on PC, but I've been streaming to my uh, okay. to my regular TV, so playing on uh, my Xbox Elite controller, so it feels the same, Fancy. but it's all on PC. Nice, yeah. nice. If it was an Xbox, so that Mr. would be awesome. Mr. Dirty Bombs, I heard you had a scare with your Xbox today. Yeah. So how you doing? That was better now that I know that it's not broken. That's pretty fun. Yeah. Just uh, played with some Mario Kart with the fiance before this and unplugged my Xbox from the wall, plugged it back in, and it was saying that it couldn't find the connection. I'm like, 
what do you mean? It's just, I just, I literally just unplugged it. How is it not working? Yeah. That's some bad so for you. I got in. Yeah, I know. I got into panic mode, started sweating a little bit. I'm like, why, <laughs> why is this not working? I, I spent so much money on this. Why is it not working? Switched to a different outlet, turned on just fine. I'm like, well, I have to go admit that I was wrong. That's always fun. Plugged yeah. it back into the same outlet and it still worked. I'm like, what? How? Just take it. Why? Just take it and run. I'm not going to question it. It works. <laughs> I'm actually still nervously turning it on and off periodically just to make sure that it's still working. <laughs> but uh, that was the low point of my week. Otherwise, it's been pretty average, honestly. started playing Force Arena as well. Yeah. I'm currently, I'm not stuck, but I'm choosing not to play it until tomorrow because there's the um, special missions and the the Kiro character mission and whatnot, and I both have to get, I have to get a play pack yep. or something like that. Mm-hmm. The one that's time locked mm-hmm. until tomorrow. So I was like, yeah. I'm waiting on a play pack too to finish that one. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just like, yeah, I'll wait until tomorrow to play some more. So otherwise, yeah, I beat Dishonored too. Nice. Nice. That was pretty fun. Um, was it as they good actually as have you a patch thought? coming out. Uh, it was actually, awesome. I'm probably not going to do another playthrough right away mm. just because I'm not entirely sure if it's going to make too much of a difference because I played as Emily, the new female right. character instead of Corvo. Yeah. Um, I do kind of want to play Dishonored 1 because with Dishonored 2 came with the definitive edition, but Sweet. I did spend the entirety of the day downloading Doom, so I might play that tomorrow <laughs> instead. Very Ooh. nice, man. I still need to play that campaign of Doom. I hear it's great. You do. It is a big Well, download. it's 70 gigs worth, so I mean, it's got to be worth something. Oh, that's a big yeah. boy. It is a big boy. Well, my week's been good. I have uh, been busy getting us all ready, as as we all know, for Pack South in a couple weeks. So we're getting ready for that. That's yes, pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, I've been pretty excited about getting Tom here on because I am a huge Mass Effect fan and uh, have always been a really big fan of voice acting. So, yeah. uh, I, Tom, I can't wait to pick your brain and 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 talk over some things. But uh, sure. But it's been a good week, man. It's uh, been low key. I haven't played oh, a lot yeah. of Xbox. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really been playing much. I mean, other than some mobile games, like uh, I tried the uh, the Force Arena today, which was pretty addicting. I might have been sitting at work and playing a little too much, but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's what been they won't know won't hurt you exactly. Yeah, but uh, it's been great and. Yeah, I'm just ready to get this thing rocking and rolling. So, uh, oh, oh. rocking, rocking and rolling <laughs> down to the beach. I'm strolling. Yeah. So, uh, this episode, guys, is going to be a little bit different because we're going to just spotlight Tom here. We're going to talk to him about, you know, voice acting. We're obviously going to talk about what we can with Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, so, uh, let's buckle up. But before we do, Let's send it over to Dirty Bombs for Rapid Fire News. Rapid Fire News. Spider-Man is confirmed to join the ranks of Avengers in Infinity War. Horizon showcased two new trailers for their upcoming game, Dragon Age Origins, now available on Xbox One backwards compatibility. Scalebound is no longer in development as Microsoft and Platinum Games parted ways. Official Destiny eSports rules have been set by the ESL. Just Cause 3 released a beta for a new multiplayer. Destiny 2 leaks are floating around on the internet. One of those is already a rumored delay. The new Rocket League update has been deployed by PS4, Xbox One, and PC following Psyonix's recent Steam success. Woody Harrelson, for whatever reason, is confirmed to be in the new Han Solo Star Wars film. And don't forget to check out BottleBreacher.com and use your code MULEHORN10% all caps to get 10% off your next purchase. That was Rapid Fire News. Let's get back to the shenanigans and whatnot. All right, guys, so we got Tom Taylorson here, the voice actor for Mass Effect Andromeda for Scott Ryder, one of the main protagonists there. And before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out. The guys in the Mass Effect Forever Discord chat told me to say, hi, Tom. So (laughs) they just wanted to say hello to you. Hi. Any way they can. (laughs) So... um, we just, I just want to ask you to get it rolling here. Um, we've seen a huge explosion with RPG roller, uh, role player games recent in recent history with a lot of voice acting. You know, you have like, for example, Bioware, where you have so many different ways it could go. Uh, so how, how has that affected you and your profession? I mean, have you seen any trends lately? 
Um, not really. I don't think. You know, good acting is always good acting in theory. Yeah. Um, I think nowadays we have, because of the work that people did in the 90s and early 2000s, things like that, when uh, voice acting just started in the video game space because of CD-ROM technology and whatnot, um, we have a, a common vocabulary now within the industry among voice actors and directors and um, you know audio professionals in the industry. And I think that makes things uh, easier and faster for everybody to get through the work. But then on top of that, I also think that it is more competitive and challenging mm. because you have people who are not just out there known for their animation or other things like that, but people who specialize almost in voice acting for video games. And mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I sincerely believe, as you guys probably know, I, you know, I taught at Columbia College in Chicago. Um, it is its own thing insofar yeah. as acting style and challenges and the technical challenges they're in. So I think that in, in that it's gotten stronger and more competitive. I think that's a big thing. Um, on top of that, you're going to be seeing more and more things where it's less about voices and voice acting and just acting because of, uh, performance capture and facial yep, capture yep. for a lot of things. I came in months ago to work on something and I didn't know what it was. And I just auditioned for a voice or whatever. And I came in to do, you know, some background, whatever people, you know, no, no name, no nothing, just, you know, citizen number, whatever. And then I was told the day before, uh, hey, just so you know, you're going to have one of those helmets on. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, so I walk in. <laughs> yeah. So I walk in to do, you know, a few things and they outfit me with the helmet and the Velcro with the little camera and the blindingly bright LEDs on oh, my face. Yeah. So I can do whatever I want physically, but I'm thinking, wait a minute, they're going to be, you know, matching my lip sync and other bits of my capture wow. to what I'm recording here. Okay. And this isn't like I'm a main character. This isn't somebody who you're going to recognize. This is just an, you know, an NPC yeah. wandering about with, you know, off lines about other things happening in the world. So I think that is going to be big in the future. So, um, the way I sometimes put it is, oh, great, more face actors coming into <laughs> my, uh, you know, yeah. my territory. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, everybody. Thanks a lot, yeah. guys. I appreciate it. You know, <laughs> there, it's one of those funny things in that there are, you know, there are jobs that are kind of, you know, walled off where if you can't do this, well, that's not going to happen. Um, voice acting is one of those things where for the, a while it wasn't worth it and all sorts of other things, but now everybody wants to do it. And as you guys are aware, people are aware of it. Yeah. fans and others much more than before because of the internet and other things and so it's suddenly available to everybody and i can't go and necessarily take you know a film or theater actor's job but they can come in and do my job and so that's uh, always this thing that's kind of in the back of your head um and i don't begrudge anybody it's all acting yeah. you know and, yeah. and no matter how it's done um and work is work and we're all trying trying to work um it's just one of those things where you just have that little you know that little niggling thing in the back of your head going oh i gotta brush up on this 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 and this regardless of my background because it's just there's just more competition because of what the technology has done wow that's that's really interesting because i never even thought about that how technology is really driving that now with the facial recognition that's pretty freaking awesome and crazy to hear it's not yeah well, and it's not in everything you know that's a triple a game thing you yeah, know right. if you once you get past that suddenly it's you know indie games and things like that you look at uh, is it wayne june is that the gentleman's name um darkest dungeon i he, he plays the I think so yeah have you played this no anyways um he's the only voice in the whole thing besides you know uh, ambient screams or whatever and he is the owner of the estate that you, that who's, he's hiring adventurers to go into his estate and clear things out. 
And he's got this amazing narration throughout the whole thing. And it's this dark, like Lovecrafty and terrible stuff, you know? Yeah. And that's just him. The whole game is one thing. So you've got that level, but then you've got, you know, the big AAA where right. everybody's facial capture and performance capture. Um, so as much as that kind of thing is happening to, you know, change things up at that end, there's a lot more going on in the indie game space and other games at different uh, uh, development tiers, budgetary, you know, wise, budget wise. Yeah. That, uh, that, you know, there's more work out there too in general. Yeah. So you're saying a bum like me might be able to get a job at an indie title. I think, I think so. Yeah. There's, there's stuff out there, you know? Yeah. Um, it's about, but it, at the end of the day, I sincerely believe, and not just acting, you know, so many people think, oh, it's acting, acting, it's so, you know, Meisner or something like that. Yeah. It's about knowing how to affect and interact with an audience, whether that's an audience of one, uh, uh, you know, a, a stadium full of people or a small theater. It's about interacting. You know, some of the best voice actors and others that I know, they are musicians, and they have a stage presence, and they're able to translate that to the mic. It's just yeah. about making those connections. Sense. Yeah. Hmm. So I got to ask, too, since you're voice acting in some games, I mean, obviously you've done some other work before, uh, which we'll get into a little bit later. But are you sure. also a gamer? Did, have you ever played Mass Effect? Have you ever Baldur's Gate or anything like that? Yes, all of those. All of them. <laughs> all, of them. <laughs> all of the above. Yes. Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate uh, 2, um, uh, KOTOR. Nice little oh, yes. Level 2. Uh, let's, I mean, yeah, the whole Mass Effect trilogy, the DLC, whole nine yards. Yeah. So I, it's, I was in a, I kind of got the 364 Mass Effect uh, years mm -hmm. ago, and all of my friends were on 360 at that point. Yeah. And I remember being in the condo that my wife and I shared, playing that in the little office. I had a, I had the 360 hooked up to my, to my monitor for my computer, and I played it there. Um, and I remember then we moved and kids, and suddenly, okay, now I'm playing Mass Effect 2 in the living room in the blue house. And same thing with 3. And so, yes, yeah. to move to Los Angeles, and suddenly three months after that, be involved in mass effect is <laughs> is it's uh it's a little i don't know what to call it i don't know what to call the experience uh, it's been yeah. uh surreal interesting <laughs> surreal. crazy there yes there is a, there's surreal i think that's definitely it um and yeah and that's been the bulk of the experience yeah is that kind of surreal oh Oh, I guess this is a thing. Okay. Well, time to show up and go to work, I guess. Yeah. So, so have you always been a gamer or how did you get into gaming? Is it just kind of something you fell into? Uh, my dad brought home, my dad's an engineer. He's an environmental engineer mm -hmm. and he brought home an Intellivision wow. when I was okay. a kid. Yep. Uh, so this is Intellivision, like Coleco, Atari, that, that yeah. era. Yeah. And we always had the Intellivision around that I started playing that. And then in sometime in 86, I want to say it's for my brother's birthday. My brother's uh, four years younger than I. Uh, he got the NES Advantage, and that's the one that comes with the dual cart of Mario and Duck Hunt and the Zapper. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. And that was fantastic. And we hooked up you know, that system to the, to the little TV we had in the kitchen. Uh, it was that and Top Gun. Yes. Play Top Same Gun time. on the oh, NES. Yeah, um, I remember that one. And and just it just goes downhill from there because then it's <laughs> then it's uh, Super Nintendo, uh, the sixty four. Somewhere in there, I started playing PC games mm -hmm. because of friends of mine. I started upgrading my home computer and then building my own computers for PC gaming, uh, mostly because of Wing Commander. Uh, Downward spiral. Wound up. Yeah. Oh, just yeah. <laughs> so it's it's just my my. My dad got us Game Boys back in 89. That oh, was like yeah. the Christmas gift. And I remember sitting there with a link cable. He's sitting in a chair and I'm sitting, sitting yep. in a chair next to him because he can't go far with a link cable yeah. playing Tetris and yelling at each other. <laughs> yeah. So it's 
So it's been with me for the longest time. And I played Dungeons and Dragons in junior high and high school go. and college and Vampire the Masquerade. Okay. And, yep, yep. It's, uh, yeah, I'm nerd core. Okay, so tabletop I'm pretty sure one of our... Uh, hmm? Go ahead, so, go ahead, Dirty. Oh, I was going to say one of our uh, contributors probably just shat in his pants a little bit hearing that you played D&D. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He said what? He said oh what? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we sure. actually have a D and D stream every Friday night. So, oh uh, yeah, one of our friends, Gravy Kingpin, uh, Joel, he like he likes to get in and and Dirty Bombs is actually part of it too. So, starting a new adventure on Friday. Can't wait. Nice <laughs> rock and roll. So, uh, you know, not to be presumptuous, but maybe Mass Effect, you know, wouldn't be necessarily your favorite game would it do you is there a series or a franchise that you think is kind of your your main squeeze um the i think somebody asked this in one of the other another interview and i and i i thought about it then and i've kind of rethought it since then it's tough it's tough <laughs> and it is it is because i've played so much yeah um and though I've tried, I've never been one of those people that can say, this is my game and I just play this, you know, like that person that buys, what's that? what do I do? I buy Madden every year and that's my game for the year or Halo or Call of right. Duty. Uh, I like to play a little bit of everything. Um, I really think just the way it stuck with me for, I mean, like a decade almost and what it did to me <laughs> in other ways <laughs> to keep up with it, the Wing Commander games. Oh yeah, okay. Chris Roberts okay. Wing Commander series. Yeah, just I mean, I bought them, I rebought them, I bought the speech packs you know, on the three and a half inch floppies. Um, I bought and then I rebought the uh, the trilogy again when it came out on CD ROM. Uh, it had the behind the scenes footage with everybody, nice. and then uh, Wing Commander four, and then Prophecy. It, they just were with me for a very long time. And I learned to make boot disks, um, do some yeah, programming in yeah. DOS, and a lot of things like that because of that game. So what it meant to me kind of culturally and for my like gaming focus and dedication, yeah. I think Wing Commander. So I think you just topped my nerd skill. Like, that's <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was an era, man. Boot discs, you don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to ever do that ever again. Well, I started with floppies because, like, that's that's where the name Mulehorn came from is back Ultima, if you ever played that on the old floppy yeah, drive. Yeah. So, uh, but I want to ask you, too. So you're doing this, I mean, Bioware is known for their voice acting. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of, and you, you get to rub elbows with so many talented people. Um, so I got to ask you, did you ever get a chance to just chat with anybody else within past Bioware games or any of the other voice actors and just say, Hey, like, I really liked you in this, or, Hey, that was really awesome in this. I mean, did you nerd out a little bit when you got to meet a few of those people? Uh, no, because I really didn't get to meet any of them really um, dang funnily we work in isolation for yeah. the most yeah. part you know um and so every now and then maybe i met someone in passing yeah there were a couple cast members that i met uh whose names have not been revealed yet okay. so i can't say anything about that yeah but you know they were on their way out as i was on my way in um although my my first session uh he was in the building doing something else uh keith farley yep yeah, that's uh, that's Thane. Yeah, among a million yep. other things. Yeah, he also finished directing. He directed Final Fantasy Fifteen and some of the uh, uh, Call of Duty games, wow, things nice. like that. So they introduced me to him. This is my again. I'm three months into Los Angeles. Yeah, and I've got this thing, and I show up, and I'm at the studio, and the engineer says, "Oh, by the way, this is Keith Farley." I'm, and I just hey. Hi. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, and you just, you try to be cool and cordial and not say, yeah. I just said, Hey, I, you know, I know you work. I'm, I'm a fan. Oh, thank you. You know? Yeah. Um, and so there's, there's that. And, you know, the only person that I really got to talk to was Frida, uh, Frida Wolf. Yeah. Uh, who plays, you know, Sarah Ryder. And that's because we knew each other beforehand. And many times I was on my way in as she was on her way out or vice versa just because they tried to schedule the riders all on the same day because we wound up covering a lot of the same material okay. in that day. So they'd be able to work through stuff with one of us and then already have those 
performances and those beats and those challenges in mind when they got to the next person. The workflow. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I, I think it made a difference. The, the directors were saying that. Um, but I think beyond that, though, some of my kind of nerding out was working with some of the people whom I'd never known except by name or reputation mm. uh, at Bioware. Yeah. Such as Caroline Livingstone and things like that. People who are the directors. And I thought... You know, I've watched, listened to things that you have directed and cast for a very long time now. Yeah. And I've said, you know, thanks. Thank you very much for having me. You know, yeah. And now uh, this last week, I'm, I'm bandying back and forth with like studio heads and <laughs> you know, the lead producers <laughs> on Mass Effect. It, it's very strange. Yeah. Um, but, a, but a lot of fun because it's, you're working together with everybody trying to make this game. I mean, I do my very little thing and I just appreciate immensely what, what yeah. they're doing to put this game together. Well, speaking of working together, I gotta say y'all, your video with Frida that y'all made it put on YouTube. Oh my gosh. Pretty yes. Pretty funny. <laughs> pretty funny. <laughs> Thank Boom. You. <laughs> Thank you. That was uh, quite, yeah. quite entertaining. The, yeah. the, the, the media marketing folks over at, uh, uh, at uh, Bioware came up with that the idea <laughs> nice. and when we saw that they'd come up with this Frida said have you watched us on Twitter did you see any of our stuff back and forth on Twitter about this before you <laughs> yeah. wrote this they said no why what are you doing on Twitter and Frida just said we've had this joke on and off every now and then <laughs> I can't believe you're doing this you know picking up on it yeah so it all it, it worked out it was a, there's a lot of things um, just kind of uh, serendipity that have worked out like like Absolutely. that, such as Frida and I you know, uh, knowing each other before the game and things like that that have uh, played into this experience being very cool, very very cool. Yeah, I about lost it when you were like, "I'm married, I have kids." Boom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody yeah. even made a GIF. I was like, "Oh, guys, no!" Oh my oh, gosh, no, I gotta find that real, now. We gotta real, find yeah. it. <laughs> Wait, did he say GIF so, or GIF? Oh, that I brings to another important question. Oh. Is it a GIF or a GIF? <laughs> Don't a, even it's bring a it GIF. up. GIF. <laughs> graphics. <laughs> graphics. The voice is spoken, Emil. You are wrong. Format, right? I'm just saying the owner says yep. GIF. What is he I'm know? just saying I'm Tom sure. Taylorson says GIF, so I mean. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Look, I, I, I'm an audiobook narrator. I should know these things. <laughs> but I do have correctors. I do have correctors. You know so. things. So, yeah. In theory. <laughs> So Tom has spoken, so from now on, we'll call it a GIF. So are you happy, Dirty Bombs? Finally! <laughs> well, man, don't be happy if you actually stick with it. Lang yeah. Language is yeah. a culturally developed thing. It's not just what's in a book. It's what the people use, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, here's the I question mean, then. When you destroy another player in Quake or Doom, what's that called? Fragging. Mm, when Gibbing? they are destroyed. Ah, see, there's the problem. Now it's jibs. Giblets. As, jibbing. as in giblets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's jibbing I mean, versus... Giblet. Yeah. We'll be sure to edit Fair this enough. Part. Okay. <laughs> giblets sounds more fun. It's just more fun to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's, that's jibs or yeah. jibbed. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Something to think that. about. I can go with that. that. I didn't have them on. Yeah. <laughs> So I kind of want to ask you a few industry questions too. I mean, about voice acting in general. And sure. uh, have you ever seen the documentary? I know that voice. Have you, yes. Have you? Okay. So I absolutely love that documentary and uh, mm -hmm. that. And so I just got to ask you that, you know, watching that and watching people in voice acting, what is it that really drew you into that industry? Uh, they said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with that. Absolutely. Repeat. Yes repeatedly um <laughs> it was um i kind of figured out later on that playing with my voice and you using it for effect as it were has been something that i've always done uh as a person and as an actor and then there were just little tips throughout my career um in college i remember kind of finding the voice of a character that, that wound up influencing other things or doing something physically would alter how the character sounded. Um, my first voiceover audition, I booked it and it was for a video game. Uh, you know, little tips like that throughout the whole thing. Yeah. And then somewhere, and I'm in Chicago too, so it's mostly commercial. 
So that's just where things are. And I wound up working with a gentleman uh, by the name of David Lewis, uh, who runs David Lewis Creative Radio out of Chicago. And he's an ad guy from back in the day, writing for the majors uh, throughout Chicago. Specializes in radio now uh, because he specialized in radio then, working for Anheuser-Busch and uh, yeah. every car, Chevy, all sorts of stuff. And he had me on for a spot, for a radio spot years ago at a place that is uh, no longer in Chicago anymore. The studio closed up. Uh, but the people there and, and what they're doing are still there. Um, and he pulled me out of the session once we were done and sat me down with my partner and said, you guys can do this, period. <laughs> so who are you with? Who are you with? Do you have a demo? Do you have a demo? And it was just cut and dry, you know. And I've never been one to kind of uh, jump out and strike on my own, say, this is my thing, this is what I do. I've, uh, And this has probably worked against me. I've always kind of waited for permission, you know. Right. I test the waters a little bit, but have somebody say, hey, you know, kid, you can do this. And when he did that, I said, all right, that's it. I got to go all in on this. And he brought me back for more things and other things. Um, and everything started picking up, even as I was doing more you know, Shakespeare and working at Chicago Shakespeare, this other thing kind of picked up. Yeah. And then it just, it just hit um, voice acting itself. I was just, even after my time in doing Shakespeare and big stuff and all these other things on stage, I just kept making, just making a little more money at it and yeah. really getting into it and the people and the art and the craft of it. And it just hit a tipping point not long after I had met and married my wife that it was just eclipsing everything I was doing monetarily from theater, even though I enjoyed it and I still like doing it. I, I love the people that I was working with. And I just looked to her one day and I said, I don't think I'm going to beat my head against that theater wall anymore. I'd kind of, I joined Actors mm -hmm. Equity, yay Actors Equity, and just kind of hit a, a, a glass ceiling in Chicago that would have been really difficult to break through. And I didn't have a day job at that point because I'd had enough stuff going on that a day job would have prevented my ability to do some of the things that I could, that I wanted to do in voice right. especially. Yeah. There were a number of instances where they said, could you be somewhere at, you know, noon and it's 10 a.m. and I have to say yes, you know. Um, so then she said, okay. And there was a little bit of time of, you know, Xbox during the day. <laughs> yeah. not, a, not a healthy habit. While she yeah. was working very hard at Northwestern and the business school and the alumni association yeah. there. So that, you know, that's not good for a relationship. Don't do that. <laughs> But then it just started going and going and going. And the more I focused and, and uh, put into it, the more I got out of it. And I found that it really grabbed two sides of me, the kind of the artful play fun side. Um, my mother, uh, the language arts instructor. So some of that. And then the scientific side, the guy that builds computers. Well, now I'm in a room with a computer, a compressor, a, you know, the, the, yeah. the audio gear, the kind of the right. science too of it. I remember watching David Lewis, uh, break down a script. We recorded it. We got it as tight as we could. The legal came in that morning. And so he had to cut his script to ribbons in order to fit in like 20 seconds of legal at the back end of this spot. He had his legal guy get it, speed read it down to 18 seconds. And I'm watching him knowing exactly how much to surgically remove from his copy to pick up tenths of a second. Yeah. Half second, quarter second. Um, and I just love that. I love that, that science of it. And I think video game voice acting, as much as any of the other things, has that science mixed with art. Because you'll have, ah, oh, this is floofy, you know, we're finding our moment, you do this thing. And then every now and then, okay, here's the picture. The performance capture guy got this in here. He did it in this time. You've got to match this to his movement. You don't have to worry about it here because you've got the back of his head, but here you have to match it. And, oh, okay, the science. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. craft comes into it. So it really just started to just get all the creative and you know, science juices flowing. And obviously from me talking about it now, it just took over. Um, yeah. And I just, and not that I didn't in theater, but 
the people that I've met and worked with have just been phenomenally talented and just sweet and wonderful people. And I, I love that about that, the voice acting industry and community. Yeah, that is awesome. Is, is, so is that kind of how you got into, um, you know, your faculty membership? You, you were a faculty member at the uh, Columbia College in Chicago. Is that how you got into yeah. that? Yeah, I was at a, um, a, uh, uh, audiobook workshop and I kind of talked to a woman who was then the head of the voice acting department in the radio department at Columbia. Oh. And I mentioned, yeah, I kind of yeah. think about teaching. I don't know. It might be a thing. And so I, we kind of let it drop for uh, maybe about a year and I got back in touch with her because other uh, things were, you know, in flux. And she said, sure, we'll, we'll talk. I'm, I'm always looking for, you know, adjunct faculties, people to substitute for classes, things like that. And I came in and substituted for one of their instructors there. And she said, hey, I noticed you have a lot of video games on your resume. <laughs> would you be, would you think you might be able to teach a class on video game voice acting? And being an actor, I said, yes, because that's what you do. <laughs> right. They say, do you, do you think you could go? Yeah. Do you think you could learn accordion? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you spend the next however long trying to figure out who to learn accordion, how do I get an accordion, which to practice before the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is actually a true story. Um, <laughs> nice. And, um, and so she, I said, all right. She gave me a, a template to break things down and figure things out to create a, uh, a syllabus. And yeah. again, the science part kind of kicked in and I realized, oh, I can break this down like this and this is like this and then I can borrow this from here and oh, I like that idea from this. And I realized, oh, not only can I teach this, but this is a teachable thing. This is very much its own skill set within voice acting. Yeah. I think I could do this. And I taught it for a few years and my uh, students were very forgiving <laughs> and <laughs> wonderful. Um, and uh, I loved working with them. And when they got it, they got it. When they worked hard at it, they, they figured it out. And so breaking down a lot of uh, the, the video game voice acting into those kind of scientific terms, that was a treat. And I think it gave me an even greater appreciation for voice acting in general and voice acting in video games. Uh, and then I got to study a lot of the people that are out here in Los Angeles. And I followed them on Twitter, things like that. And so yeah. to be inside that fishbowl, you know, as of like a year and a half ago, exceptionally intimidating uh, and challenging, but in the good way, you know, you go, all right, what is Matt Mercer doing today? Okay. Don't do what he's doing. Cause he's doing that, <laughs> you know? Um, and you have just in the back of your head, those people are out here. Okay. Right. Think about that and use that. You know, what am I doing? What's my version of this yeah. and, uh, showing up and, uh, uh, and, you know, bring your A game. Yeah. So you said, uh, you have, Obviously, you go to a lot of auditions to get your jobs. Did you audition for your most recent role in Mass Effect, or did they maybe hunt you out? No, they didn't hunt me out. <laughs> no. I'm, no. I'm nobody. Nobody's hunting me. Um, no, I auditioned, like, for everything. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. And I, and I think that is a particular – it's not always the case, but I think it's kind of a particular plight with – Acting in general to a certain extent, but definitely voice acting. Yeah. I always imagine uh, Rob Paulson, who you probably know, um, uh, Yakko from Animaniacs and uh, yeah. Pinky from Pinky and the Brain and a million yeah. other things. Uh, nice. You know, um, he talks about having to audition and go out and audition for all sorts of things as he does today. And of course we think, but you're like the guy, right? Right. Everybody knows you. You're, you know, you're this. I remember uh, my, we have season passes to the, uh, to, uh, 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 to uh, Universal Studios, uh, Hollywood here. And my son, who's never watched any of the movies or the cartoons, loves the Transformers ride, adores it. So we're in the waiting area. You're going through the thing, and they've got displays and screens, like making up a story around the ride. And then a little character comes in to explain something, and it's Wheelie. Yeah. And it's freaking Rob Paulson. And I'm just thinking they're going, oh my gosh, this is inescapable. He's amazing. Yeah. And <laughs> he's everywhere. Right. And, and, and you think, well, he's everywhere. He's, he's Rob Paulson, right? Yeah. Well, some, somewhere he's got, he's, you know, someday this week, he's going to go into a callback for something and the writer and or director is going to be there and he's going to be my age, you know, on the older side or younger. 
and say, Mr. Paulson, I, oh God, I love your work. I grew up listening to this. You know, this was inspired. You're wonderful. And he will say, thank you. And then the person will say, we loved your audition. And Rob Paulson will say, thank you. And the guy will say, but could you do this? I don't know. It's like, I know your work from 30. I grew up listening to you. I don't know if you can, if you can do this. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to have you audition again. Even though it's like, wow, you know his body of work after this period of time. And and you're going to. You're going to call him out? How dare you? He's Rob Paulson, you know, <laughs> in my mind, in our mind. But that's that's the name of the game. And we all do it. We all do it every day, you know, unless yeah. you're coming back for something or you know, oh, I've worked with this guy before or whatever. We're, we're doing it every day. No matter what name or recognition or the things like that that we have, you're out there fighting for every job. Yeah. So I want to ask you how, you know, you went through the process of getting, you know, trying to get that position. And when you got the position and you got the phone call, what was your initial reaction? Were you like playing it cool and just like, oh, sounds good. Okay. Or what, how'd you feel when you got that phone call that, hey, I'm going to be in a Bioware game? Um, the initial phone call was, uh, gosh, it was out. And uh, it was a message. And, he, and my agent said, Hey, I think we got a bite. The first thing I booked in LA at this point. Yeah. And I said, okay. So I called him back. He said, hey, check your availability for this, uh, for this character and maybe, you know, two incidentals or whatever. I said, uh, yeah. Uh, no, I'm available. Nope, no problem. It's just, okay, just a two hour session. Okay, sure, sure, no problem. Okay, good. Now I knew this was a Bioware game going out and I knew this was Mass Effect going in because I could see it in the scripts. I could right. go into how and why, but I know. Sure. And, I go back to the audition. I listened to my audition and I thought, really? That? All right, sure, fine. Somebody somebody liked it, great, no problem. Right. And then I looked at the script again and I emailed my agent. And I said, hey, everybody in the other scripts that we auditioned with, they're talking to the guy in the script that we booked. <laughs> the role that I have. <laughs> oh is, this, yeah. is this a real thing? Yeah. Do you think they would go? Do you think they would do paid callbacks? Because this <laughs> seems like a bit of a stretch to me that they would just say, "Yeah, that's the guy off of that initial one audition." It's like I, I know what kind of work is involved in this, and I know everything else about the franchise, things like that. Do you really think they would just give it to some, you know, schmuck from Chicago? Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh. And that stuck with me even into that first session. And I had to say, this is it. This is, this is the thing. And they were saying, yeah, yeah, you know, um, yeah. And, you know, more and more sessions later and a year and a half later. Yeah. And I'm going in again on Monday. Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's huh, crazy it's ride. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That's so awesome. have you ever have you ever tried to get in any previous Bioware games as a voice actor? Yes. Um I auditioned for Vega in Ooh. Mass Effect 2 while I was back in Chicago. Tell me um, the story here. Story time. Well, <laughs> but it came through, it said, Hey, <laughs> this is for Mass Effect. It's a, I know exactly what this is. <laughs> you know, and they and they described yeah. the character, they broke it down, and I thought, okay. I gave my swing. And you dump it. Um, I think I still have the, the script somewhere. I save a lot of stuff. Again, the kind of nerdy academic part of me. I save yeah. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And so I looked at it and read it, finished it off. And of course, a long time goes by and it's, uh, you know, and the game comes out. And uh, I listened to the game and realized that's, um, that's Freddie Prince Jr. And I was like, <laughs> the actor? <laughs> <laughs> And I really listened to it and I went, yeah. he's right. He's right. He's freaking yeah. right. Spot on. You know, there's something that he's able to portray as a dude. And I thought, I'm not a dude. I'm not a dude. You know, that's not like in my gut. I'm a, I am quite literally like a college professor. Right. And there's just this dudeness, you know, to him, dude-ness. you know, referring yeah. to, referring to Shepard, uh, you know, Lola. It's like, you know what? Yeah. I could never get away with that. Yeah. And Freddie Prince Jr. gets away with that. He gets away with that murder brilliantly in the game. Yeah. Um, and then 
And what I love too is the other stuff that he's done. You know, when I was doing a Kanan on a, on a, a Star Wars Rebels. Oh yeah. And I go as a Jedi, and he's, yep, right. No, he hits it. He hits that note too. You know, he's really there's so much great stuff that he can do, and uh, yeah. I love him. I, I love him. I love his work on that. Uh, so yeah, and I think there's some other stuff that maybe came through some random background stuff while I was in Chicago. But you know, at the end of the day, I'm in Chicago. I knew yeah. that. I always knew that was going to be a thing. And so uh, the decision was made a couple of years ago to move, not so much for me, but for my wife's working career. And mine was kind of, yeah, I think that's that's the next step. I think that's the thing that we need to do at this point for everybody yeah. to move forward. So, you know, even though I probably should have done it, um, you know, 10 years ago, um, we did it now. And everybody's adapting okay, I think. Yeah. I would say yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. So when you were doing the Bioware gig and you knew you had it in the bag and, you know, you're getting ready and you're getting amped up, did you ever reach out to, you know, let's just say, did you ever phone call Mark Mir and be like, hey, Mark, <laughs> you know, I'm about to be the next Commander Shepard. Like, what's some tips you can give me with Bioware? <laughs> um, no, actually. Uh, yeah. despite Despite following him and you know ms hale and everybody on yeah. the twitter on the twitters i uh, no, no i never reached out and said anything you know um i recognize and i i love their work but at the same time you also have to go okay well that's been done yep what's my version yeah right yeah. and i gotta figure that out independent <clears throat> of them and trust in the system because there are a lot of people from the phenomenal writers on the game and our directors and people like that who are also there making sure you don't fall flat on your face with this. Yeah. And so I've kind of left that alone. Although this last week, uh, Mr. Mir followed me on Twitter. Oh, uh, dang. Uh, Success. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the next level. Right? I've, I've arrived <laughs> now. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. cool, cool story on that. We were this close to getting him on our podcast when we just started, but he was super busy with some stuff in theater. So yeah. So we got to get them, get both of y'all on at the same time sometime. That would be epically yeah. fun. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Rider, yeah. Shepherd. Yeah. Rider. Shepherd. Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and every now and then I'll run into somebody from, from different things like that. Um, yeah. You know, uh, uh, ran into the gentleman who plays Morden. Uh, mm. yes. I'm on my way in and out one time and I'm, you, and you're on a regular, sh you're, okay. You know, shut it down, say hello, shake hands, <laughs> yeah. you know, and then always forward. Yeah. And then, uh, follow each other on Twitter and have the occasional conversation and just go, I used to teach your work to students and here we are just talking. <laughs> That's awesome. awesome. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. Yeah. So out of curiosity, how much can you relate to writer? Um, you know, the more I've thought about it. Uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, the idea that here's somebody who's kind of prepared, knows what he's doing, and then suddenly, nope, no, you don't. Now you have to do this, you know, and, and take the, right. take this to the next level. And suddenly, oh, you're in charge. You're a leader. You know, um, that I, I realized there's kind of a bit of that in this move to Los Angeles. Uh, there's a little bit of that in my time. Oh, by the way, you're now teaching, you know, at a college. Uh, <laughs> you're going to be doing silly stuff for college credit for students, you know. Your stuff is, you know, uh, uh, worth that to somebody. Yeah. And uh, it's pretty, you know, there's a lot of that. Um, the youth thing, it's like, I was young once, sure. But, um, uh, yeah, the more I think about it, the more... That is, uh, that is something that, that is in there. And, uh, I just got to say again, the, the writers and the writing, uh, mm -hmm. make a lot oh, yeah. of it easy. Made, made a lot mm -hmm. of the work very, very easy to play. I got to say, cause cool. that's, that's what really pulled me into all the Bioware games. It's just like the story and the character development, the yeah. voice acting of it. It's always just been top tier. And it's just, I oh, just love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been wonderful to be a part of that. And that was another thing that I found uh, wonderful is that knowing you're coming in and there's this great support system and what they're putting together and building is fantastic. Um, 
you know, even small things like the software that we use to record everything is fantastic and is kind of like cheating. Cause I, I can imagine, I believe in the first, <laughs> maybe the first, maybe the second as well, they were still using like printed scripts uh-huh. for, think about that, for thousands and thousands of lines of dialogue. Mm-hmm. And you record it and stuff, and then you put it into this, and here we go into Pro Tools, and then that has to go into a different piece of software. That they, mm-hmm. I can't imagine. And what we're able to do now is kind of record right there, have stuff fed to us in the moment, and then it's in there. It gets bounced out to Bioware, and they're able to implement that and put that into the game later that day. Wow. wow. That's awesome. It's unbelievable. And so... You can plow through hundreds of lines in a morning, in an afternoon, <laughs> and have it out there, you know. Um, and it's, it's, so it's amazing. And I think it makes for better acting on our part because of that immediacy and the pace with which we could work. Otherwise, you're there kind of doing three in a row of something, and oh, I think that works. And does that stitch with this? I don't know. We can know right away if the performances are going to stitch together. Wow. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. So I kind of have a uh, an on the fly kind of question here for you. Um as we've been chatting for the last almost hour, it's listening to you has been kind of like smooth jazz almost because you, you have that really <laughs> like silky radio voice and it's, it's it's pretty awesome as compared to us average shows and whatnot. It's the microphone. Um <laughs> It's um, the software. Exactly. <laughs> you stole it. Um, with your either with Scott Ryder or previous um, jobs have you done much in the ways of like altering your voice or has it basically just been how you talk uh, no so what you're hearing right now is you won't hear this as scott writer uh okay. uh, scott's younger and some of the pace some of the pattern you know is, is similar but he's a little brighter a little more nasal Things like that. I had to mm, okay. youth in it, youth in it up a bit. Um, <laughs> I've, I've sounded like this since I was 19. And <laughs> so one of the things that's been challenging is, you know, I, in college, you're playing everything because, you know, you're college kids and you're playing grandpa and you can't take it with you at 19, you know, in old age makeup. Yeah. And, um, that's fine. And you learn, you're, you're taught to be a character actor. And then, of course, you graduate from university and they say, okay, be you. And you had, you had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea what that is. Yeah. So <laughs> I specifically remember coming out of school and auditioning. And I realized the kind of disconnect that must be happening in certain instances where I come in to do a monologue or whatever it is. And they see, oh, this, this young gentleman, a yeah, 21-year-old guy. Hi, Tom Taylorson. And they're like, what the hell? You know, there's this, there's a slight <laughs> disconnect. What can I do with this guy? And so I thought, all right, I have to, you know, tweak my monologues, tweak everything, maybe see what I'm auditioning for. Maybe it's a season. Maybe it's a play. Are there things in that show that I could be good for? And if so, I need to change the pitch oh. of my voice, the timber, mm-hmm. just place it somewhere. Again, right, voice acting, right? I should have known, right? Um, mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that's how I kind of weaseled my way into other things. Um, but then, you know, the Shakespeare stuff kind of took off because a couple of people took a couple of chances on me. Uh, I could sling steel, as it were. You know, I could fight. Um, and, and then I learned from the best colleagues and friends and then people at the Chicago Shakespeare Theater uh, to, you know, do Shakespeare. And that became a big thing for me. And, uh, I realized, you know, if you are coming out of school and you can do folio technique and sling steel, there's work for you. There are, you know, summer companies yeah. and things like that. There's Shakespeare. It may not pay great, but you can be out there working right away because there's all these young roles and lovers and they always need somebody to fight and die while the old guys do all the talking, <laughs> you know? Uh, I did that, right? You know, I, yeah. I did the fighting and dying. Uh, yeah. So... It's, you know, invaluable skills and things like that that I learned uh, early on. But then, yeah, I just had to learn to kind of play the game because uh, I, you know, I probably figured it out a little too late, but by that time, you know, other things were taking off. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Um, with, um, I know you, you had mentioned um, blanking uh, Matt Mercer earlier, um, and I have been watching him do his Dungeons and Dragons 
um, stream with Geek and Sundry with um, Travis Willingham and Laura Bailey and and just the rest of the of the Liam crew and all voice actors and that and, yep really cool. helps with that too because it it just like it's so immersive immediately it's like there were points where I was tearing up when a character was dying and like I don't even know these characters I'm coming into it at the at the tail end of it and whatnot but watching Matt DM is just amazing because he will fluctuate in and out of his normal voice and 12 different characters just on the fly so with you is like is there a process that you go through for either getting into character or in general before you record uh well for scott i'm now so used to it it's like putting on a hat or a push a button then yeah comfy pair of jeans you know um on the way i used to listen to the mass effect one soundtrack on the way in, you know, yeah, had to get into that. Nice. Okay. Um, and I will just like read road signs as Scott Ryder, things like that. Um, but, uh, finding that voice was, uh, you actually will hear the Scott Ryder voice in some of my audiobooks. Uh, that voice okay. was something I developed as like, this is my regular guy kind of rough around the edges voice for audiobooks. And okay, there you go. Um, and so the development process is different for everybody. Um, you know, it's uh, some people kind of play with something and then create it that way. Some people play with an inner thought and develop that way. There's so many different ways to go about it. Um, a lot of my character and other funny development things lately has come from audiobooks, which I think kind of plays into video games because you can't, unless it's a very cartoony game, you can't be too crazy with your voice in an audiobook format. And I think that plays well into, you know, the realistic acting usually required for video games. Um, Mm -hmm. but you know, at the end of the day, these are, these are characters with inner lives and thoughts and feelings and you can hear it if somebody's just doing a silly voice. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jim Cummings, who is among a bazillion other things, uh, he's Tigger and Winnie the Pooh and Darkwing Duck. Yeah, and Dark I, 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 yeah, I just, nice. I, I could, it's a litany of things. I, I'm not even going to get into it. Um, and most famously for us as video game people, that's Minsk from Baldur's Gate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go yeah. for the eyes. Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes. <laughs> um, and he said, we just happen, we, we perform characters who just happen to have interesting voices. And yeah. that's one of those things that I, I never forget. You know, I like that. clicked with me. I was like, yep, that goes back to my theater background, everything like that. Everything else is, is, is fluff. Uh, yeah. as long as you are being honest to that inner life of the character, it's there. Uh, um, I think of, uh, Richard Horowitz's, uh, performance as Invader Zim. It's over the top. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's batshit, but it is so <laughs> true <laughs> and honest. And he plays it. He plays everything he does just to the hilt. And you go, yeah. yep. Yep, that's exactly yep. it. Yeah. And you and you believe him. You believe <laughs> yeah. that utter insanity because of the commitment. So, you know, while video game voice acting winds up being more like a TV drama, uh, I would liken like animation voice acting to musical theater. You know, there's mm. a lot of a lot of jazz hands okay. going on based upon uh, what genre of animation you're working on. Uh, even some of the action adventure cartoons i i close my eyes i watch them i listen and i go boy that sounds overacted you know some of that mm-hmm. still sounds too much to me so i go okay i need to know i need to be altering my acting when i audition for these projects i need to match where these people and these things are playing at because my right. head is usually in an audiobook or a video game or a commercial yeah. space um so it's it's a matter of kind of yeah, you play with the voice, but then you got to back it up with some kind of character. You know, how does this person think? What do they do when they wake up in the morning? It's kind of like yeah. act- actory schmactory stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, uh, Ryder's kind of my, was my audiobook everyman, uh, just a little more on the young side. So, can we have a sample of Scott? I'm a little ill right now, so hold on a second. It's true. I'm a little little ill. This is Pathfinder Scott Ryder. 
Nice. Wow, okay. I dig it. Okay. That was okay. pretty awesome. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> so the thing is about Scott, like I said, he's a little more nasal and he's a little more, he's borrowing some of the, uh, you know, the texture, things like that. I'm trying not to do too much because, you know, they're going to, they're going to come and get me like for NDA stuff. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. But, yeah, but he also low key for it. We won't tell anybody. But he also dips. <laughs> hear the SUVs outside. <laughs> but he also dips into you know, you know the the, the throat and stuff like that. You know, it, it yeah, gets yeah. into different places too. Um, and then it's just, this a little constriction in the throat to get that little bit of texture. But then I wind up yeah. opening things up too for shouting and yelling. You know, and it brings it out. So. Love it. Um, yeah. I know it was a little lackluster sample there, but but um, no, I love it. Yeah, you know, I can totally hear the youth in your voice. So. Yeah, so you'll yeah, so sure. you'll get it, and then you know, it's just really you know, at, at the end of the day, it's you know, it's just a, uh, uh, it's it's uh, it's just Norland North. Norland North. Yeah. Ask the internet. It's just <laughs> Norland North. Do you, I'm just you doing sound a North. little bit like Norland North. I was going to say that, but I didn't. I don't want to bring it up. But. Which is why I will never be on Blaze and the Monster Machines. <laughs> <laughs> That's Nolan as Blaze, and I was like, okay, I'm auditioning yeah. for yet another side character on Blaze and the Monster Machines. How far away can we run from Nolan? <laughs> Not far <laughs> enough, apparently. <laughs> yeah, it's so, funny. Yeah. So you were saying with the more advanced technology, you're not reading scripts off of a piece of paper anymore. No. You have, uh, you could say, a more streamlined productivity now. Uh, I used to play in a band a lot, and I know our singer would do lots of crazy things to keep his voice in shape. So do you have like a, a go-to potato chip or an, an aloe vera drink or anything that you do? Because if you're reading thousands of lines at a time, uh, you, you surely you got to do something to kind of relax and R and R your voice, right? Um, for this project, not much. I mean, they've got. I'm I'm always downing water. Water mm-hmm. is 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 everything. But then for this one, uh, they've the studios that we worked at, they've always got like the Ludens throat drops and not the Ludens. Uh, what's the the slippery elm or whatever the the singer's voice right. thing, whatever. Yeah, so they've got yeah. those little tablets there, and they've got other things. And they've always got plenty of water. They've got uh, Herbal Remedies throat coat there. So sometimes I'll take okay. that before or after a session. Um, day to day, it's just lots of water. But because I'm doing audiobooks most days, day to day, it's a lot of water and a lot of talking. So I think I that winds up giving me a little more stamina for the work. Than, than, yeah, s- sure. than somebody else may have, depending upon what they do. You're used to it. Yeah. Um, but then sometimes, you know, you're just, you're just firing for effect. You just got to tell everybody to get down. You've got to tell them about that <laughs> grenade. You've got to tell them, the, you yeah. know, something is incoming. Um, right. And there's no way around that except knowing how to use your voice and support it and make that work. Um, and the fine folks at BioWare and our engineers and everybody are very aware of that, too. They know we're blowing through hundreds of lines today, and this is the little shouting part. Uh, we don't want to go too much. We don't do too much in the blood-curdling scream area because that's not what the whole thing is about. That's just the one little thing we need for this one moment in the game. The rest of it's dialogue. Yeah. yeah. So um, you just got to be ready coming in. And then when you're done, you know, some people, uh, a friend of mine from Chicago... He would he'd do a sing down. We'd finish off doing a musical, and he would sing down. He would sing when he was done, you know, humming or something like that. Okay. Um, okay. I used to warm up by singing rock and roll music or whatever it was, you know, on the way in. Yeah. Depending upon, depending upon what it was. Um, so everybody's got their own thing, but it, it's water. Um, and then I've got the uh, throat coat. I've been using that since my musical theater days. Um, and that's about it. I haven't tried too much other stuff because that seems to keep things going hey, if it works but that's yeah. interesting you would kind of equate it to like a workout you have a warm-up <clears throat> cool down session afterwards oh yeah absolutely yeah. as any singer will tell you you, you need that because uh, it's not just the musculature in and around the voice it is the voice itself you know the uh the the flaps and your vocal cords and it's a physical thing yeah and they work just yeah. like anything else and they get overworked and things things work that way there are a couple yeah. uh, audiobooks and voices that I do for audiobooks that I realized like later, 
Oh, this is a series. It's in first person now. And it, okay, that was a bad choice. It was a bad <laughs> choice for that character's voice. And I just have to deal with that, you know, so I'm not going to be able to record for five hours today. I only get maybe three hours with this particular character's voice and I got to call it. So it takes me yeah. a little, little longer to get some of those books out. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Huh. Yeah. You've, uh, you've mentioned several voices already, uh, since I've been talking and, uh, I was thinking about one of the first voice actors that I recognized. Um, he's already an actor in the, in the films already, but was John Leguizamo in Titan AE. Mm-hmm. And uh, most recently, Chris Pratt and Will Arnett in the Lego movie. Yeah. Um, it's really kind of made an impression on me. So I was like, wow, these are the, the, the talent they're putting into their voices. You know, you can tell it's them, but they're really exaggerating it for the character and it fits well. So on that same token, what are some of your biggest influences as you've come across people you follow the most? Um, depends upon the, in- well, Rob Paulson, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Maurice, yeah, Maurice LaMarche, obviously just if they were on a cartoon in the eighties and the nineties, I've been following oh, them yeah. for the longest time. June Foray and I just, Kath Susie and a bit of a list. Oh god, yeah, yeah, the <laughs> list. Mark Hamill, obviously. Oh, yeah. of course. Yes. You know, obviously having grown up, yeah, that's the thing is that I'm um having grown up with him in Star Wars. That was you know, that was a film. That was the thing that I did. I remember watching Jedi from the front row as a kid. Sweet. Um yeah. I still have the little the program. It was like a magazine they handed out. I still have that thing. It's beaten nice. up, but I still have it. Um and so I remember just kind of tangentially because it wasn't again front and center as it is as it is now suddenly he's doing is that him in this video game is that him in this yeah and then i was watching i came home from school and i put off homework until uh i had watched the tiny tunes animaniacs batman the animated series block oh yeah oh yeah i had to i had to and so priorities i would remember when credits used to be full screen and you could actually read them yeah. I would sit yeah. and read the credits to these. Again, yeah. I should have been a voice <laughs> yeah. actor, right? I didn't know. I didn't know. I wanted to be an actor, right? I, was, I would be an actor. Um, and I started looking, oh, Kevin Conroy and this. And wait a minute, Richard Mall? Wait, Bull from Night Court? Uh, that's, that's Harvey Dent and Two-Face <laughs> from the Batman animated series. Yeah. Uh, and he's genius. He is absolutely Ah, oh, he's a phenomenal on on those shows, I, yeah. and then I remember seeing you know, the Joker is Mark Hamill. It, but wait, what? The actor, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, and what? and I started following all of this stuff and having those realizations, and so I just watched for those names, and they were the same names and the same group of people over and over again. And I started listening to the voices, and I go, "Oh, that's a takeoff on this. Oh, that's a different. Oh, that's a version of this. Oh, that's Cam Clark again." Up Cam, you're using that thing. Up Cam, nope, that's the same voice, but with a British accent, Cam, you know, I, I'm picking up on this. Yeah. Um, and then it just extended into the video game space and how it, how those people worked in there, you know, and uh, then, of course, uh, anime came in and the dubbing people from that started working into the video games and working into mainstream, you know, American cartoons. You know, Steve Bloom says hi. Um, and it's just, because there's, you know, everybody starts, if you're good, they'll find you, you know, and if you consistently mm-hmm. do good work, they'll find you. So those, I mean, those are just some of the names off the top of my head. Um, and then, That's, you know, nowadays yeah. in the video game space, you know, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, list. Courtney Taylor. And um, because I've met him and worked with him, Steve Downs, Master Chief. Uh, yeah. Steve's, no, he, Steve's yeah, a wonderful guy. Um, Got to work with him and have him uh, in my class as a as a guest. Oh, wow. yeah. that's fun. Yeah, and then that's got, really awesome. Yeah, and then got to work with him on, on a radio play, and then I threw up uh, on stage. Well, <laughs> true story. <laughs> and uh, were you like nervous or just no? I was sick. I was like I had the flu. Oh, okay. And I came in. Yeah. And I had four lines left, and I was doing that little monologue, and then I had to stop. And the people started, and I walked back behind like this little. Uh, 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 audio shell in front of a, in front of an audience, and I just I puked into a bucket. Oh man! And then oh, we, they finished man. things and they recorded it, and I said, "I got four lines left. Let's do this. Let's do this." No, Tom, we'll record it next week. You're back next week. No, no, I want to do it. It's four <laughs> sentences, please. <laughs> and they they sent me home. So yeah, 
Yeah, it's like, yeah, I worked with Master Chief and I threw up in front of him on stage. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> Way to go, soldier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you name it. If it's, if they've done any of this stuff, yeah, I follow them and I'm a fan of theirs. Again, I've only been in this inside the fishbowl for a year, a year and a half now. So I, I'm just yeah. a random follower on Twitter. And so every time, you know, I ran into Mercer at an audition about a year ago and had to just keep my app shut. You know, um, he yeah. introduced himself. There was, he was talking to two other people as, as he was walking in and there was this look in his eyes. He looked at me and it was that in my mind, anyways, it was the, I know everybody in town. I don't know you. Yeah. Who are you? You know, right. a very cordial, really cool. And he's like, Hey, I'm Matt. And I said, I wanted to say, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, love you. Love your show. And, um, I just shook his hand and said, I'm Tom. Nice to meet you. You know, and you know, everybody just moves on. You know, yeah. that's, that's, that's the day. Um, so yeah, I'm just a random fan and, uh, lucky to run into some of these, uh, some of these rock stars. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I got like, when you mentioned Mark Hamill is, is jokers, like obviously everybody knows that. And I think there's probably not a soul on this earth who doesn't think that he's probably one of the best, voicing actors for the joker in general um oh, when yeah. i saw the flash um the, the cw flash which was an unfortunate show to begin with um but when they had the trickster or whatever whatever the character was i can't remember his exact ex- actual name but they no, had the trickster. Mark Hamill, yeah. the trickster yes um and um they had mark hamill play him i'm like all right this, this well, could be interesting did you ever see <laughs> Did you ever see the original Flash series from the '90s with Jonathan West, Jonathan Wesley yep. Ship as the Flash? I Mark think Hamill, so. Mark Hamill played the Trickster. Yep. Yeah, really? on That's that awesome. original series. Yeah. And I remember seeing go. him, and he's like, "Oh my god, there he is! He's just doing yeah. his thing. That's amazing." Yeah, but when they when they at the end of the episode when he was revealing his big master plan, and he let off the Joker yeah. laugh. I'm like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's something else, and to see him doing it, you just go, "Oh wow, geez, okay, yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah." Yeah, so I love watching say? these people go to town. Oh, sorry, no, I just I say I love watching these people go to town. So you know, uh, yeah. the films like you know, I know that voice, things like that. It's wonderful. Uh, there's these great, uh, um, and there's great shots. Of everybody at comic cons and things like that, and I, I love that stuff. Yeah, what would you say is your hardest role that you've played? Whether it be from just having a difficult time from finding a character's voice or anything from like just poor writing. Um, I've been pretty lucky. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I've been pretty lucky writing wise. Um, gosh, I'm going to say for the sheer volume and exploring things and, you know, no pressure, uh, Scott Ryder. Yeah. yeah. It, you know, yeah. It, a brand new thing. And for it to have turned out, I think, as well as it has, uh, is wonderful. Um, I'm also going to put up in there, uh, I'm going to put up in there Octodad. Yeah. Finding that, you know, doing the other stuff and Sushi Chef, uh, that, was, that was okay. But finding that and then maintaining it and kind of, entertaining the young horses and uh, the development guys and myself doing it and just kind of keeping that going and making it work. Uh, that was a trick. That was a trick. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I don't know, maybe, and then maybe probably Wulong Goth. Follow me here. Wulong Goth <laughs> in Dao Fang, the fist of Lotus which was the first fighting game for the original Xbox. It was developed by, by Studio Gigante, headed by John Tobias, part of the uh, Mortal oh, Kombat snap. creators, John yeah. Tobias Ebu. Yeah. And he was like, there, there were two factions, and he was the lead of the villain faction. And he, like, he was like, we want a Chinese Darth Vader. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah. And so finding that, and they were like, yeah, 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 that works. And we know, okay, good. And it was like the third or fourth voice that I wound up doing in the game too. So it was something we found later. And uh, that was tricky. Just yeah. finding it, maintaining it. I was also mm. 20, whatever, you know, as a, as a <laughs> relative kid playing a 40, whatever, you know, guy in a 
mantis costume. Yeah. Um, so that, so that was a, that was a trick. Um, uh, but everything has their special place and special challenge. But yeah, Scott's been a, a particular challenge, um, because of the scope, the scale of it, uh, the material itself, all of it. And the intimidation factor. No and then pressure. Things like this. Yeah, <laughs> no pressure. And then things like this. It's like, hey, you want to interview? I'm like, what? You know, yeah. I, I've been here. I've been here for a long time and just kind of doing this thing. And so that people give a rat's ass, that's, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- well, thank yeah. you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. We do. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to say, uh, for the most uh, experience I've had in voice acting is pretty much, you know, using, uh, changing my voice around for, for prank calls, for prank calling. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's pretty entertaining to do that, to get into character and really just get people going for a long time. What would you say is the most fun you've had playing a role? Um, you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to be really honest. Um, probably some of the tiny little baby roles I did at Chicago Shakespeare yeah. because of the people that I got to work with. Yeah. I was random background guy and like the haberdasher and some other stuff like that in The Taming of the Shrew at Chicago Shakespeare. And this is 05? Yeah. Maybe 04, 05, something like that. With the great David Bell directing. And um, it was just an amazing, amazing cast, amazing group of people uh, and people who I consider my friends to this day. Awesome. And, That's awesome. Um, yeah. And it was, it was, it was just, some of my time there at Chicago Shakespeare is and always will be special. Also, my time with um, my friends uh, Jan and David Blixt and their crew of Patches company. Again, more Shakespeare. Um, some of the best actors I've ever known and uh, some of the most wonderful people that I've ever known. Uh, a bunch of them, I, again, I consider my friends to this day. Awesome, um, awesome. But video game-wise, yeah, Scott's pretty amazing. But again, <laughs> it's the team of, it, it's the team of people. Yeah. It is the team of people. Yeah. Um, not to, you know, Octodad is a very special place. That team, Young Horses, is a very special place uh, in my heart. Uh, but the people and everybody at Bioware, it's ah, it's just been a phenomenal treat to work yeah. on this game. Yeah, that's fantastic. And just have fun and just fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking about Bioware and the game, mm. so whenever uh, Andromeda hits and the multiplayer opens up. Would you get on there and play and use Ryder's voice while playing against <laughs> other people? Because I've seen that happen to uh, um, the couple of characters that are with or Overwatch, yeah. Roadhog and McCree have played. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. use her voice in party chat. And I think, uh, especially the Roadhog guy, I recently put out a video of it, and it is absolutely hilarious. So I think it's something pretty cool. I want to see if you if you would do that too. Um, I, I actually asked about that because of Matt Mercer trolling people online, <laughs> you know, over the headset, yeah. giving them, giving them in its high noon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And I, I don't think, I mean, I haven't done anything yet, but I don't know if like the writers are involved at all in the multiplayer. I don't know. Uh, oh um, yeah. Right. Because it's, as you've probably read, it's going to, it's like it's separate thing. They've got strikes True. involved yeah. and things like that. Yeah. And part of me is like, I, can I be in the, I just want to no, it's not me calling things out. I don't get to be like the halo guy. That'd be great. Uh, you know, there's another guy, um, out of Chicago, uh, uh, gentleman by the name of, uh, uh, Pete Stacker. And he's, uh, if you've played, what's the first, what's the first halo with the horde mode? Was that reach? That was, uh, yeah. yeah Fire was that reach? The that firefight. Was, uh, ODST. ODST. <clears throat> ODST. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they have a character called Sergeant Stacker, and that's mm-hmm. Pete Stacker's voice. And that'd be cool. Like, I know yeah. Pete. He's this really great guy. He's this phenomenal, phenomenal uh, uh, actor, voice actor. And I thought, yeah, that'd be cool. It'd be like a multi... No, I don't get to... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, th- I think it would just be me on Xbox Live talking to people saying, hey, guys, how you doing? It's, <laughs> it's Scott. No, it's, it it really is me. I'm Scott Ryder. I'm the voice sure of. Sure you are. Okay, okay. I'll right. cover. Th- All right, I'll cover this point. Okay. That's a soundboard. <laughs> yeah. I'm healing you. I'm healing you. Yeah. This yeah. Probably would have pulled out. I don't believe you, man. 
Yeah. Right. But I, it's but I do hope to, like, board. yeah, it's just as great as a soundboard. Yeah, but I do hope to actually, like, play with the community when it comes out. I didn't do a lot of the multiplayer for the earlier games. Oh. Uh, but this, this stuff looks pretty cool. So well, we, we might get into that. I, so. I maybe sunk almost a thousand hours in the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. So yes. really? It's, yeah. I was there for about right. half those hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not near as much though. Yeah. And hey, it's never too late. Those servers are still up. Oh, yep. yeah. That's, That's right. true. That's true. So I think we're starting to round this out here. Uh, would you have any maybe words of wisdom, some ad- advice to people who are maybe aspiring to become maybe not just an actor, but specifically a voice actor? And I know they are one and the same, truly, especially after talking to you now. But what would you, what would you say to somebody who maybe has that in, in their mind? Learn to act first. Mm. Yeah. And it sounds dumb. Um, learn to interact <laughs> with an audience first. Uh-huh. Learn to give and take with an audience first. Um, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be Meisner. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to study at the new school. Um, it can be improv, any of that stuff. It makes a difference. You know, uh, learning to pick apart a script and the important parts thereof. Yeah. Um, just learning to act and perform again that that connection with an audience yeah. yeah i think that's i think that's key um very very prime um uh the will wheaton rule don't be a dick <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love that yeah. i love it i mean it, it this is the, some of the greatest group of people uh, you know, that I've had the pleasure of working with everybody in voice acting is really, really awesome. And they just keep bringing in awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome people, you know, be awesome and awesome will come with you. And then, um, hmm. uh, a gentleman uh, by the name of David Woolley, uh, I think he's still teaching at Columbia college. He was a fight master with the society of American fight directors and one of my instructors for stage combat and everything. Oh. Uh, wonderful man. And I loved, loved working with him as a student and then as one of his actors and all sorts of stuff. Uh, he, his saying was, be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. Solid. And I think that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely out there. You know, yeah. said, do your, do your version of something. That's, that's what that is. Be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid. It's awesome. I like it. Well, guys, I think that about wraps up the podcast. Tom, I want to thank you for coming on, man. We really appreciate it so much. Yes. Uh, thanks for Very letting much. us pick your brain and talk about voice acting because we all are, are super noob, noobs with voice acting and learning as we do our, our thing here on the podcast. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming on. No, thanks for having me and thanks for listening to my long winded <laughs> responses to everything. <laughs> Well, no, it it's, always it's been so it always turns, jazz and we're down right there. right yeah. <laughs> no it, it always turns out <laughs> it always turns out this way say so, yeah we're gonna hold to an hour yeah but it never works out that way it was yeah. the same way in class so for our listeners where can they find you or find your material where where can we find mr tom taylorson you can go to my website that is in need of an update tom taylorson.com um i am followable and available every day on twitter and that's at taylorson i also have a facebook slash tom taylorson tom taylorson voice something like that it is searchable um that i usually update a lot more with uh information regarding uh, my audiobook work just -hmm. because of the demographics of things like that um but i update things like that across everything but the, the website will have a bunch of stuff uh tom taylorson the Facebook page gets more updated, but for daily interactions and ridiculousness, as I talk about um, my kids, yeah. video games, video games, uh, Andromeda, and video games, that's at Taylorson on Twitter. Yeah. Well, again, we thank you for, for being on the podcast. You guys, make sure to check him out on his website, on his social media, Facebook. If you liked our podcast, don't forget to check out the other cool cats at ninjapancake.com. If you, you can like us on Facebook, if you could leave us a review on iTunes and you can follow us all on Twitter. You got at circuit eight at Thaddeus prime at dirty Bob bombs at your go. horn gaming. And remember guys, when in doubt, blow it up. Oh, boy.
Not gonna lie, I'm actually playing Force Arena right now because it told me there was a free pack available. Ah. Oh.